I have a story I want to tell, and it's one that I've been wanting to tell on Out With It for a while. One that I've been encouraged to tell sort of over and over until I can emotionally remove myself from it. And it's a, it's a story that pretty much is the center of a lot of who I am and who I turned out to be. Um, this is not a this is this is not a story of success, and this is not we're not talking about you know success. We're talking about for better, for worse, my abandonment issues. Um, I've seen them more and more often uh, appear on stream, and uh, I feel like telling this story not only gives you insight, but also reminds me that it's still something that I have to work on. I was in seventh grade. I went to school uh, in a middle school in northern New Jersey named Copeland Middle School, and uh, I grew up in a mainly white neighborhood, but had a very a very diverse group of friends uh, on my street, North Brookside Drive in Rockaway. And uh, I had known these, I had known a lot of these guys since I was, I was four years old. We moved to Rockaway when I was four. So I, I developed a very good friendship with a couple of them. Uh, I definitely got the whole gamut of, of the types of friendship that exists every where from the joking, teasing, bullying kind of friendship to the, you know, friend that I wish I still kept in touch with now. One of those friends uh, was one of my best friends. And a quick, aside, a quick side note, I, the, the way we met was at a, a local man-made lake. We, had, we called it the you know, White Middle Lake, the beach, Beach 2, we called it. Uh, my mom took me there. I met him. We were playing with our sand toys and... Uh, pretty much he, you know, he asked if he could be my friend and I said, let's party. So we were friends for a long time and we played basketball together. Uh, every time when we walked home from the, from school, we, we played basketball together and we play horse and, uh, we played street hockey. I was a goalie. Uh, we copied the power Rangers by, you know, coming down our bicycles down a hill that was nearby. Um, so we shared a lot of experiences together, and uh, I feel like I had a I had a very good childhood um, because of that. Middle school comes around, and there and uh, you know you start to see the formations of you know the type of personality that the type the stereotypical types of personality that you see. You know, I, I was starting to turn out into the sort of introverted nerd type, stereotypical nerd type character, and my friend, my best friend. Uh, was sort of turning on to be had had kind of hit it with the popular crowd, and you know we were still friends. It's something you'd see out of a movie. You're still friends. There was no classism there or anything. There was no uh, no tears. You know, outside of school, we we didn't really run or inside of school we didn't run out of, run into each other that much. But outside of school, um, you know, we we did. Uh, there, there was a there was a field trip that would happen at the end of every year, and uh, in, in seventh grade we went to this um, this park near Rockaway Mall, and uh, it was a grade wide trip. Um, I had had a crush on one of the more popular girls, who, fun <laughs> ironically enough, uh, was named Jennifer, and um, she was a Caucasian. You know, I'm sitting down, but like, you know, average height, uh, athletic and um, really nice. Really. She was really nice to me. And uh, but a lot of the other people kind of saw that as the whole like you'd see it as the, um, you know, geek geek has a crush on the popular girl. I was a bit of a loner in, in middle school as well. I had a couple of friends, but I was it was very easy for me to kind of find myself in a kind of put myself in a situation where if everybody else was having fun and I wasn't, I'd go mope. I wouldn't call it full on depressed. I just would go mope. So we're at this field, sunny day, it's uh, April or May. And, uh, you know, I'm walking around. I, my, my friends didn't come to that event. My, the friends that I had in seventh grade, um, didn't really go to the event. So I was just kind of there, you know, participating in some of the activities. I think there was baseball and soccer and uh, other ball-related activities going on there. You know, standard kind of, you know, northern New Jersey middle school fair. 
I wasn't having a lot of fun with it. So I went over uh, to the, um, I was just kind of walking down the parking lot. And uh, there were two baseball fields to my left. I went into one and uh, I sat down and uh, kind of just, you know, moped it out. Like, and so what I didn't notice what was happening at the same time was that apparently Jennifer and her friends were also moving off the field. Um, Ronak, my best friend, was talking with one uh, an acquaintance of ours or a mutual friend named Joe. Ronak and Joe saw me sitting on the bleachers and they saw Jennifer and her friends moving off of them. And I got off the bleachers and started to kind of circle the field back and try and, you know, enter, re-enter, uh, re-enter the, the whole event, right? And Joe said to me, or Joe said not to me, Joe said to Ronak, apparently there was a discussion between them both that I had that, yo, Brian looks like he's stalking Jennifer. That's all it took. Um, by the time I had finished my round uh, around the baseball fields, um, I was already getting looks. And from that point on, from that day forward, the rest of seventh grade and actually into eighth, um, I, was, I was branded as Jennifer's stalker. And I was branded as that by, you know, no less than somebody I had, I had referred to as my best friend, the person I met when I was four, the person I played basketball with. And uh, it, it, the way it unfolded, the memories I have in my head are of times it, it, straight out of a, straight out of a movie, alone at a at a um, not knowing no, not knowing where to sit because the entire the entire grade had known at that point, being alone at a at a lunch table, people not knowing what to say to me, um, and then the uh, subsequent approach from Jennifer, uh, who was also kind of a bystander in this whole thing, kind of trying to apologize for what everybody else had done and, or the rumor that had spread. That was really the first time. And I remember when I first told the story, I, I, I called it a betrayal. I no longer call it that now. Um, it was really the first time I felt like, you know, when I was in that moment, I I did feel that. Because, you know, I knew I knew I knew Ronak more for more years than anybody else in that school did. And that that could happen to me at his hand and, you know, even after realizing not stopping it. If my best friend could leave me like that, than anybody could. There was a point where recently I had a sort of revelation and or breakdown where like my interior, like the, the, the center most part of me is this person who doesn't, who it's not that I don't want to be alone. I, it's not just that it's not as simple as that. It's a more negative it's a more negative turn. It's that my default state is to be alone, that everybody will eventually leave because that's what's meant to happen. And it started in seventh grade on that day. It's a wonder how a moment like that, people point to moments like that in their life. And it's a wonder how, you know, that actually works. And it, it didn't take until, you know, me being 33, now 34, realizing that that was the, that was the impetus. That was the start of everything. And maybe not the start everything, but that was the one moment where I was like, wow. Like, I get it. Like, I, I, I get how that could, that contributed to all of this because the one person who I put so much trust into had done that. Needless to say, our our relationship was kind of 
uh, affected from then on. And uh, unfortunately, we don't keep in touch anymore. Um, but this issue of mine has been surfacing, has surfaced in countless places. And it surfaces, it surfaces itself in little, little bits, like arguments or, you know, me um, not valuing myself because I feel somebody is going to leave into much larger things like relationships and uh, family relationships, business relationships, even before you even get to that point, the prerequisites of those things. Because why would you put in work into something if you, into a person, if you feel like that eventually they're just going to leave you behind? Um, my entire mentorship in the web industry was kind of based off of that as well, that, you know, oh, it's fine that, you know, people moved on, moved past me because that's what's meant to happen. Um, I'm trying, I'm doing this to remind myself that there's more to me than that. And I also think it's important for people to try and find that and tell that story because as hurtful and as vulnerable as I am and as, as that makes you, that you could have been called a stalker in seventh grade. And, you know, and, you know, that happened to you at the hands of, you know, somebody that you looked up to and that you respected. You know, it, there's a lot, there could be a lot hiding there. And I, I think it's really important for people to, to, to share these things, to de emotion, like take out the emotion from that and just tell a story. It's a lot of what I'd done without with it. And I feel like, you know, this is sort of, you know, one of the core bits. If I have a story to tell, I want to tell it because I want to help myself. I want to be able to look at this in the future and say, yeah, I did tell that story and I was proud of telling I told that story and that for, you know, to encourage other people to do the same because we're so closed and especially with, you know, in the Twitch community, uh, it's so easy to be wronged and to close. And that vulnerability is somehow a selling point. And that even, you know, lack of vulnerability, which is the feigning of strength is sort of a selling point. I want to get past that and just have people improve themselves. Hopefully that, that story, hopefully I can remind myself from that when I'm having another discussion and chat and I start getting paranoid that, you know, my chat is just, going to leave me someday, which some of them might, but not for the reasons I think. That I can be okay with it. That's a natural progression and that I am, you know, there are reasons behind it and I shouldn't take it personally. I still haven't, you know, it's been, do the math, it's been a very long time since that incident, so I'm still working it out myself. But talking about it sure helps.